Are you guys ready for spring? I know I am unbelievably ready for it. I've been ready since like January. I was in the sun for about 10 minutes yesterday and I remembered that life is not completely awful and I feel like a new person. So I just need those temperatures to increase a little bit more now and I'm so here for spring. I've got a few new items that I've got over the past couple weeks to show you. And speaking of spring, I am working on a, like how to transition your wardrobe from winter to spring. And so if you aren't subscribed already, feel free to do that so that you don't miss that video or any future uploads. And if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, my name is Adeline and I make videos about style. The first few items I have to show you are from a brand called Petite Studio NYC who have sponsored this portion of the video. Petite Studio, as the name suggests, design clothes specifically for petite women. They're an independent brand run by a team of real petites in New York. As someone who is five foot two, and I know a lot of you who watch my videos are also the same or similar height as me, working with a company that caters to our body shape and our height really brings me a lot of excitement, a lot of joy, and I'm quite delighted to show you these items, especially as we go into spring. Their pieces are fitted on actual petite women. It's not just about making a hemline or an arm length shorter here and there. We know that that is not the only way to make something petite. So starting with this absolutely beautiful blouse here, this is the Tilly blouse. This is a 100% cotton blouse in this absolutely gorgeous embroidered fabric. You can see the embroidery is along the whole blouse and it's just a fabric that screams spring summer to me. Before I go on, I just want to mention the promo that Petite Studio is having until the 2nd of April. So you can get 25% off site-wide with the code Adeline25. And of course, everything will be linked in the description box below. So back to this blouse, the cotton is so soft to wear. It's not stiff at all, which is exactly what you want when the temperatures start to increase. There is this very soft, slight shoulder puff, which I think is a really nice detail. It's like not too crazy that it's unwearable. It's like just this very small detail, which I love. And the same with this collar, you have the embroidered fabric up to the neck, which is just really pretty and quite feminine to wear. The fit is also great. The length of it isn't too long at all, which makes it really easy to tuck into trousers. I often grapple with way too much fabric on my shirts and it just takes ages to get that tuck right because there's just too much fabric. But with this, it just falls at a really nice length. And the same with the sleeves, they hit me on the wrist at the perfect length. I also love that it's double layered on the body. So even though you have this like eyelet embroidery detail, so you have some see-through parts on the arms, but because of the double layered fabric, so you can see on the inside, there's another layer of cotton, you don't have any see-through eyelets on the front. So you can wear a bra and you know that it's not gonna show through the shirt. In the cutaways, I've just shown you how I would wear this piece. A shirt like this is typically quite girly and feminine and you guys, you know my style. I like to pare these things down. And so I've worn it with a pair of kind of like looser fitting denim and loafers. And for me, that's just the perfect way to wear a top like this. I really like how this outfit turned out and I'm very excited to style this more during the spring season. Next, I have the Rowan shirt in this striped print. Such a great piece for spring. I can never get away from a striped shirt during the spring summer season. They also do this shirt in white. So if you are petite and you're looking for for a good white shirt. This Petite Studio one could be a really good one for you. This is a really classic fitting shirt. It has a very slight drop shoulder so that it's a little bit oversized, but not too much. It definitely has that sort of effortless feel about it where it's like you just throw it on, but you feel and you look amazing in it. The white version of this shirt is 100% cotton. This striped version is a mix of cotton and polyester. So this one does have a little bit of structure to it, but it still flows really nicely. And again, tucks into your trousers really, really well. Again, the length is not super long. Don't get me wrong, I love my shirts from Cos and Arquette, but those are so oversized 
that for us petites, like I struggle to wear them untucked because I just feel like I'm drowning in fabric. But with this shirt, I could definitely wear it untucked for a different look. It's a piece that you don't have to put much thought into. You just put it on with a pair of jeans and you're good to go. A shirt is a staple in my wardrobe and I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this one. So next I have a denim jacket, which is quite a unique design, I think. So this is the Page denim jacket and as you can see, it's collarless which to me is pretty unique. I don't often see a collarless denim jacket. This denim jacket also comes with a matching midi skirt. I love a matching set. It's such an easy way to look put together. I think this collarless design is a really great one for spring. You can put like a really nice necklace on and have that showing. And it's just a slightly different silhouette to what you normally see. Again, the fit is so flattering. It hits right at the waist. So it has that little bit of a cropped fit and it just makes your legs look longer, which as a petite person is something I'm always striving to do. I really like these slanted chest pockets. Again, it's just a really nice kind of more unique design feature. And it's in that just really classic shade of denim blue. So you know that this will just kind of fit quite easily into your wardrobe. A denim jacket is just another spring staple for me. I'm all about jackets in those transitions seasons and so this is just another piece that I am very excited to style once the weather properly warms up. So last but not least I have one pair of trousers from Petite Studio. These are the Carey cargo pants. These are a cotton and tensile mix and if you've watched any of my spring summer videos before you'll know that tensile is one of my favorite fabrics. It's really breathable, it's good if you have sensitive skin, it's a sustainable fabric, it's just one of the best fabrics I think. Cargo pants have been trending for quite a few seasons now but I've always been quite resistant to them and I think it's because I've always thought of cargo pants as being too casual for my style. But with these, because of that cotton and tensile mix, it's almost like a suiting material. So it has a little bit more structure to them. And I think that makes them more elegant than other cargo trousers I've seen on the market. These have a bit more structure and so they feel a little bit more dressy than other ones that I've seen. They are a really comfortable mid rise. They fall just below my belly button and they also have an elasticated waist. So it just makes them even more comfortable, especially when it gets hot, you don't want anything restricting you, especially around the midsection. I'm really looking forward to styling these with sandals in the summer and yeah I just think these are a really nice pair of trousers. Full disclaimer for my fellow petite subscribers I did have to hem these a little bit because of all the trousers I had to choose on the petite studio website I did choose their slightly longer pair so they do have shorter inseam lengths like their other trousers I of course happen to choose the longer one. But like I said in the intro, creating something for petite women is not just about the hemline, it's also about the rise. So for me, this is like a really comfortable mid rise. Whereas when I buy mid rise on like a normal high street, it's normally high rise on me. And then a high rise is normally mega high rise on me because my torso is obviously shorter than a non petite person. Whereas this is a true mid rise, which is very nice. So those are all the pieces from Petite Studio. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope to my fellow petite women, you maybe found something that you would like to try. Remember that you can get 25% off with the code Adeline25 and everything will be linked in the description box. So the next new in pieces are a few things that I bought from Japan. I was in Japan at the beginning of March for nearly two weeks. The shopping in Japan is amazing. I just uploaded my Japan vlog, well, the first part of my Japan vlog. And so you'll see that I did quite a bit of shopping. To be honest, I went crazier on the skincare than the clothes. This is all the skincare that I bought. I did have to buy a whole new suitcase to bring back to England with me. But let me know if you want me to talk about the skincare bits. 
This is primarily a fashion YouTube channel, so I wasn't going to talk about it here, but if you want me to, I can maybe do like a TikTok or a Substack on everything that I bought because it was a lot. <laughs> but going back to the clothes, so vintage shopping in Japan is amazing. I mean, I knew it was good, but I didn't realize how good. Everything is cleaned and pressed and organized in such a way that you don't even feel like you're vintage shopping or you're thrifting and everything is just so well presented and immaculate and just really, you know, the Japanese way, I guess, they really put so much care into everything that they do. So I didn't get too many vintage items, but I did get two Levi's jackets <laughs> from the same shop and which are both brown. I feel like on first glance, they look very similar, but they're actually very different. This one is corduroy. I think this is my size. So it's very, it's quite fitted, um, very nice. This one is denim and it's in a size medium. So it's a bit more kind of oversized, different materials, different shapes, but both brown. <laughs> Normally I probably wouldn't have bought both, um, but I think, you know, holiday brain kind of took over and I just thought, when am I ever gonna find Levi's jackets for this good of a price? So this one was 16 pounds, the denim one, and the corduroy one was 20 pounds. I just thought those prices were too good to pass up, and so I got both. <laughs> the next piece I have is a trench coat, and this is also from the same shop that I got these two jackets from. I just got really lucky in that one shop, and I got this trench coat. It's very weighty because it has a lining in it that you can unzip and zip in, and I just thought none of my other trench coats have a lining that I can, you know, take on and off. And it's also a different color than the trench coats that I already have. I think this is actually a men's trench coat because it's really, really long. I don't know if I should get it shortened or not. Um, my mom tells me I should get it shortened, but please let me know what you think because you know me, I love a long, dramatic coat. And I love this one. It's a double-breasted design. It has a waist tie. And I just thought for 30 pounds, it was a steal. So I got all three of these items from a shop called New York Joe Exchange. It's in this area of Tokyo called, I'm gonna butcher this, um, but it's called Shimokitazawa. And it's an area that has just an abundance of like vintage short shores vintage stores and cafes that I just can't get over how good the vintage shopping is there and the prices. Like my boyfriend got a Carhartt jacket, I think it was like 70 pounds or something. And it's like a really big, hefty jacket. Um, so yeah, amazing shopping. I would love to go back. <laughs> so next I have a handbag. And, but first I will show this to you in a minute. But first I just wanna talk about the luxury vintage shopping in Japan because that is next level. The stock they have there is incredible. There's bags that like I thought were really rare, such as this LV like kidney bean tote, uh, shoulder bag. I thought that was a really rare bag, but this shop that I bought this bag in had like three or four of them and they were all in the most amazing condition. And all the items, again, are just so immaculate. So many Fendi baguettes that I saw, like really fun ones. And you can try everything on and you don't feel pressured into getting anything. It's just a really nice like shopping experience. So much Chanel and Hermes, it's just, honestly, the stock they have there is crazy. So I obviously saw a million bags that I would have loved to have taken home with me, but buying something super expensive is just not really in my budget right now. And when I say super expensive, I mean like in the thousands, but I still did want to get something. And so I fell in love with this little Prada handbag. This is, this is she, this is my new bag. And I just love it so much. So this is not a design that I have ever seen before, but it just felt so me when I saw it and I tried it on. And I was also wearing a black leather trench coat the day that I 
um, went shopping for this bag and it just matched so perfectly. It has really subtle branding on it. So where is it? You can see in this corner here. I don't know if you can see, but it says Prada, just like Debossed. Is it Debossed or Embossed? I always get confused between the two. Um, but you can see the logo there. And I just love how subtle that branding is. That is, it's just perfect. Uh, it has a top handle. There's three compartments on the inside. So it has um, a zipped bit in the middle and then two compartments either side. And I just thought it was perfect for what I was looking for. The leather is just really soft and smooth and buttery. And I just think it's just a nice, like cute bag. So this was 420 pounds, which I thought was a very good price for a leather Prada bag. And it's also from 2015, so not quite vintage. I think, um, is it? 20 years, something has to be 20 years old until it's classed as vintage. So not vintage, it's nine years old. There were like no marks on it whatsoever. It only sort of lost its shape a little bit, but it's nothing that, you know, filling it up won't fix. I like that it's kind of an unknown Prada design. I mean, I'd never seen it before. I don't think it's like a super popular design and I'm really, really happy with it. I bought this from a shop in Tokyo called Vintage Q. I think that's how you say it. It's like Q-O-O. -O. Honestly, the stock in there was just amazing. I could have spent hours and hours in there um, and I might have done so if I was on my own, but I was with my boyfriend and I felt bad that he was waiting for me. So I spent a fair amount of time in there looking at everything, trying a few things on. And then as soon as I saw this tucked away in the corner, I kind of knew. I was like, you know what? I think that's gonna be the bag. And, um, and it was. So what's great about shopping in Japan is that uh, as a tourist, you can also shop tax free, which means you get 10% off. Also with the exchange rate right now, the prices of everything just seemed really good. So yeah, 420 pounds and very happy with it. We can't talk about shopping in Japan without talking about Issey Miyake. And I knew that it's cheaper to buy Issey Miyake in Japan, but I didn't know how much cheaper. So I wasn't completely set on buying something um, until I saw the prices actually. So I ended up getting these trousers and I've always wanted something from his pleats please line but I can never really justify the price so if you look online these trousers um, by the way these trousers because they've got quite a few um, different trousers that look not too dissimilar from each other but these are the thicker bottoms too if you want to look them up online and they are 420 pounds if you go on their website but i got these for 180 pounds which i was absolutely like my jaw was on the floor when i worked out the price because i like i said i knew it was going to be cheaper but i didn't think it was going to be that much cheaper such an iconic piece i'm so happy to add these to my wardrobe they're so comfortable they're so elegant great for traveling with because obviously they don't crease due to that pleated fabric and oh I'm just so, so happy with them. They're really like comfortable, they're so stretchy, but they look so elegant and I just love them. They also have pockets, which is great. So yeah, just really, really delighted when I bought these. And I also bought these on like the first or second day of my holiday. So I was just like on a high for the rest of the Japan trip. Next, I have one item from Uniqlo. I did buy a few more um, Uniqlo pieces, but it's mostly like heat tech and underwear, and I don't think you need to see those. Um, but one sort of more interesting piece that I got is this braided belt. And again, Uniqlo and Muji as well are both so much cheaper in Japan. So this belt um, I looked up online is 30 pounds, but I got it for 15 and I kind of regret not getting the brown one now as well. But this belt is from the men's section. 
The women's one is a bit smaller, a bit slimmer, and the braid is a little bit more intricate, like it has more leather strips in it. Um, I just gravitated towards the men's one. I just like how chunky it is and how much more simple the, the braid in this belt was. I've been looking for a braided belt for a while and I just thought this was a really good one at a good price. And yeah, just a great belt for spring. Always love that braided texture um, for spring, summer. Really should have gotten the brown one as well. <laughs> so the last item I got from Japan, some of you may have a little bit of a laugh at me, which is completely fine and understandable because I bought another pair of Adidas Sambas. I just fell in love with this maroon color. And the reason why some of you may laugh at me is because I previously spoke in another video about how I regret buying um, my white pair and my black pair. And the reason why I regretted buying them is because I just thought that they were too trendy. It was never about how they look. In fact, I actually really love the way they look. And I wore my white ones in Japan because they just go with everything. I find them really comfortable. Um, in fact, I think they got even more comfortable because of how much I walked in them in Japan. And so they kind of just grew on me even more. When I saw this maroon pair, I just absolutely fell in love. I've made peace with the fact that they are a very trendy item. I think I've actually seen a few videos on TikTok saying that sambas are over, don't wear them anymore, and I just kind of like ignore those videos because I don't care. And I think that is the question to ask ourselves when it comes to trendy items. Are we still gonna wear them when the trend is over? And the answer is yes, I do still love these and I'm definitely gonna keep wearing them. When I think about the other trainers that I own, so I've got Converse's, um, Nike Cortez, I've got two pairs of those in different colors. New Balance 990s. I realized that I like, um, I like the look of like a heritage trainer, which the Sambas are. They've been around for a really, really long time. And I just like that sort of vintage-y look from a trainer. So anyway, I saw these. I It was actually love at first sight. And um, I think they're sold out everywhere in the UK or you have to pay extortionate prices for them. I got these for 73 pounds and I was ecstatic. I just think the maroon on these are so nice. They also have like the gold stamp on the tongue, which I just love. The maroon and the gold is just such a nice combination. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. So much spring content coming up. I'm so excited for the new season. Remember to use the code Adeline25 on Petite Studio so you can get 25% off until the 2nd of April. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.